Can we go These on? are the I'm jokes. About to call you the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Yep. This is just All one right. big fucking intervention takedown. Um, hi everyone. Uh, this is the stream that we set up. I'm Ruby, and we have some guests on to talk about OnlyFans and sex work and all of the societal impacts of these things that are a fairly new phenomena and there's definitely a lot of uh cons and some pros to them in my opinion um so yeah why don't you guys introduce yourself oh it looks like alf got uh dropped from the there, oh, there, he is. there we go i've been having connection problems in the evening that's what happens living in a condensed city during coronavirus <laughs> lots of traffic move to the burbs man move to the burbs. <laughs> yeah um, no, I'm such a city boy. I can't help that. <laughs> um, yeah, we, yeah, you could do a before. quick intro. Doing introductions. Um, I'm Jordan B. Um, relatively new to the online sphere. I've done some Zoom debates. Um, I'm America first. Uh, I'm in that that kind of realm. So, um, Twitter, Jordan B. Videos, YouTube, Jordan B. It's all in my Twitter description. So, yeah. Um, I guess Glink. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm Glink. I make YouTube videos that are kind of like journalistic pieces on things related to internet culture, uh, social issues, and uh, gaming, that kind of stuff. Awesome. Uh, my name is Charles. I'm a philosophy major. Uh, I've posted some videos about like the things I've done in school. Uh, presentations I've done, and I've got a bit of a Twitter following, and I just like to share ideas and talk about things. I'm a nice. thinker. Awesome. And last but not least, Elf. Is Elf still there? <laughs> well, he is a city boy, so. I know. Well, Elf, uh, we can, uh, I guess, get back to you. Um, I'm not sure what happened to his audio. Oh wait, he got disconnected. Here we go. Oh no, Dude, there's, there's two, two elves. Elves. Two elves. Holy <laughs> shit! This is wow. weird. <laughs> I'm multiplying. This is good. <laughs> this is good. Oh, They're there. replicating. All right. uh, we were just gonna do your intro and then get started. Who's intro? What? Uh, yours. What? What am I supposed to say right. for my intro? That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> that is the intro. I'm in, I'm from New Jersey. What's up, guys? <laughs> there you go. I like that. Very simple. All right. So my thoughts on this are, Glink, actually, I watched your video, um, and I thought that you had some valid critiques, and I appreciate that you didn't just do the, like, horror simp thing. It seemed like you were genuine and interested in figuring out what the actual impacts of this are. Um, but my, the thing with me is I feel like like you gave good critiques, and it's definitely an issue, but I feel like it's not necessarily intrinsic to like uh sites like only fans they're doing webcam modeling and a lot of those same critiques could be applied to any type of streamer you know you're you know potentially exploiting like a one-way parasocial relationship so what do you think the main difference is there um i agree with you that these kinds of issues are pervasive in other areas of the internet and like you said like streaming especially has a lot of parasocial um dynamic going on but I would say that with something like OnlyFans specifically and services like it, it's taking it a step further than just a parasocial relationship because the way I would relate it is um, in almost everyone's life universally, they would view intimate romantic relationships as something more deep and um, meaningful than just so you know friendships, which can come and go. And those, those can be meaningful, of course, but they're not as it's a different ball game yeah. um so that's where i would put the special importance and significance on something like only fans for commodifying intimate uh romantic relationships and i would also just to stick by my principles state that i agree with you and i do critique the parasocial relationships of twitch as well mm -hmm. all right well that's that's fairly consistent um the thing the I would take issue with um, the idea that there's something like, I know I'm not like religious. I don't believe in like the sanctity of sex or anything to mm -hmm. me. It's like, you could be talking about the sanctity of like eating food is just a bodily function that, you know, 
we developed to reproduce and whatnot. Um, so for me, I'm not really seeing, I, I, I guess it depends on the, what the customer is perceiving um, and what they think is happening for the interaction. Like uh, I know a lot of people in the industry and I've been in the industry, I was a stripper and had horrible experiences. Um, and then <laughs> when I found out about sites like OnlyFans or campsites and stuff, it was a huge, huge like game changer for me, like having a, a much safer, you know, place to work and get money, you know, and I was able to use that to pay for medical bills and college. So I feel like there are, there is like a huge pro on that side, at least for the workers. Is that something you agree with or any of you? I don't want to, you know. Well, I mean, I, th I think you kind of, you kind of fleshed out a point right there that I think a lot of people on your side think that we're leaning on as, as far as why we object to it. My objections don't come from any religious background at all. Mm -hmm. My my objections to it are, um, I, I, I think you can approach these things without even having to rely on morality. I think you can just look at societal pragmatism. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that sites like OnlyFans and normalizing sex work lead to healthy relationships. I don't think they lead to strong pair bonding with women. And this isn't a shot at you. I actually, before this call, I didn't even know that you had ever even been involved in that. Oh, yeah, I wanted to drop that bomb on I you. I didn't know that. But, <laughs> no, that, that's fascinating to me. And it actually, it adds a new, it adds a new paradigm because the thing is, is that Ruby, you seem incredibly smart. You're, you seem oh, like a very you. bright person. And for you to be solely reliant on your attractiveness to make money is is a loss for the world, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and normalizing that kind of thing takes you out of fields where maybe you could contribute more than just doing that kind of thing. So yeah, that, that's yeah. kind of my my general I, thinking is societal um, dis, discohesion. Yeah, I think Charles wants to I have a question. Yeah, I, I have a question regarding what you said about uh, you don't really have a religious perspective and you don't believe in the sanctity of sex. Um, mm -hmm. Do you believe that anything is sacred uh no not intrinsically no. <laughs> not intrinsically but, sacred so well, well, yeah because that's i mean it's like what does that even mean like you know, yeah what is all, sacred i'm an atheist what do you mean by i sacred? believe in yes. you know what science can tell us about reality and you know okay. that's well i, I just think that there is oh, a bit of intrinsic worth we'll, we'll, we'll avoid the, the use of the word sacred but i believe that there is a bit of intrinsic worth to the mechanism by which new thinking minds manifest into existence. I think that there, there, there is a bit of, of worth to be attached to that. We're talking about sex in our modern culture. Most of us tend to think of it as just a recreational activity that's like fun to do. Yeah. And we tend to forget that this is how like new Nietzsche's and new Einstein's and new Wagner's are brought into the world. Um, I mean, for me, that doesn't add a sacred element because it's almost like, you know, the, you have sex and then it's kind of a, a lottery if you put up, you know, give a good kid or a bad Just kid. Just lag out. You know, so I'm not sure if I fully am understanding um, that point. Or, uh, if I could interject briefly on, I'll try to keep it brief. So I think what this goes back to and it's good that we already arrived here, is a core fundamental belief. Because if you fundamentally believe that life has intrinsic value and that there is meaning and objective meaning in the world, then something, then commodifying certain things or commodifying anything perhaps holds a certain level of degrading that value. Mm -hmm. uh, if your worldview is such that there is no inherent meaning or inherent value, then everything is up for commodification, including sex, including intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess it's a question of what kind of world do you want to live in? Do you want to live in a world where everything is commodified and transactional, or do you want to live in a world where things are have inherent meaning and value aside that you cannot put a monetary value on? But why can't we live in a balanced world that's in between? We commodify certain things. We could commodify yeah. a lot, yeah. but not that's fully, kind of you know. Yeah. Like but, you were saying about the, the what uh, Charles was saying about what is sacred. I mean, there's things that we could probably all agree on would be sacred, but there's going to be things we disagree on that are sacred. So it's really just a, a matter of perspective and opinion of what is worth, what is sacred. Well, I mean, I think that's kind of where you get into the field of, of pragmatism where it's like, okay, we've commodified these things and have the results been good as a result of us uh, normalizing porn, normalizing OnlyFans, normalizing um, mm -hmm. a, even on a deeper level, like degenerate porn, like, like um, 
very destructive porn, like mm. the kind of stuff that's on the far reaches of the internet. And you just have to mm. ask yourself, like, have these things been beneficial to the nuclear family or have they been detrimental? Mm. And I think uh, across all walks of life from abortion rate, and I'm not trying to make this an abortion debate, but from yeah, abortion saying, rates. Yeah, no, no, I'm not. I'm just saying that, but, but the, we'll but the, the discontinuity of the nuclear family across all races is, is at an all time high. I don't think you can argue that, <laughs> that if, 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 if the arg if the argument is that the, that the nuclear family is the building block of society, then porn is the wrecking ball that destroys that house. Basically it's one of the wrecking balls that destroys that. I, house. Okay. I don't agree with that, but, but to the porn, sex you, work, to open the point of you saying, um, like to see if it's beneficial or not, how much time do you give things when there's a, a change? How much time do you give things to settle out? There's well, always growing well, pains I, with everything that you make a change. There's always going to be, be a downfall exactly. before a rise. You know, I or, actually, or um, I, I actually pulled up thing, at it's a very new phenomena, you know, right? So very, yeah, society, that's very new, yeah. You know? And the impacts it, and the consequences of it are already because with something like, and I'll let you go, Charles, you, you're pulling something up. But the thing with the family is that it's not, it's not as simple as like a transaction at Target. You have one negative family experience and you're creating hundreds of years of of instability in a family if someone doesn't know their father the ramifications of that th that that there's a ripple effect for hundreds of years there that's this isn't something we should be toying with we're toying with the very mechanisms that brought us to where we are and i've got a uh, article i pulled up in preparation for the well uh i used my university's search engine to find a art and journal entry that was in the database of academic search complete, its accession number is 1426713666. It is titled, Exposure to Sexually Explicit Media in Early Adolescence is Related to Risky Sexual Behavior in Emerging Adulthood. Mm -hmm. uh, sexually Did you explicit. Say that about like video games too and stuff. Like, yeah. Well, th this has uh, this has data to support it. Uh, let's see. Sexually explicit okay. media exposure during early adolescence has been found to be associated with risky sexual behavior. However, uh, this is just the abstract. This isn't the full article. Let's see. Let's skim. Uh, the study aimed to improve upon previous studies by using instrumental variable estimations. In addition, the study also included multimodality of sexually explicit media and three risky sexual behavior measures from a sample of Taiwanese adolescence methods. Participants were used, uh, excuse me, participants were recruited from a prospective longitudinal study from the Taiwan Youth Project. Uh, and the study was initiated in the year 2000. I mean, I guess we could like, you know. We, we I want to make like, two like, points really quick that address what you guys are all talking about. Um, so the first thing that Alf and Ruby, you guys were saying is that um, these things, would you guys both agree that um, the accessibility of pornography uh and let's say let's also include like only fans things like this are relatively mm -hmm. new so yeah. your kind of point is to say they're because they're new we don't know the full effects of it right yeah uh, we don't know if it'll settle out in the distance you don't know what what's going to happen some things we've had massive changes many times throughout history you know and sometimes it doesn't go well at first and then it settles out there's always growing pains right where people yeah. don't know how to handle yeah. a new technology okay given that it's a new phenomenon that mm -hmm. has potentially massively uh, massive uh implications i feel like the way you should approach it is not to be blatantly pro sex work it's to consider yeah. all angles and mm -hmm. if there are women which i've interviewed who have said i've gone into this industry i felt objectified i felt like i was mm -hmm. a commodity and i hated it or whatever you know any kind of negative experience that should be taken into account as well into the equation right mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um so sex workers it's like a fairly small percent of the population like I see the thing is when I say pro sex work, I don't mean like I would like to raise the generation of women to be strippers. I'm pro that. But why not? <laughs> why not? If you're pro sex, no, 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 no. In all seriousness, if you're pro sex, if you're pro sex work, what's the objection to your That's daughter like being? being like if I'm 
pro plumber and want to raise a generation of plumbers. I would have no I would have no moral objection to raising a plumber. I would have a moral but objection to raising a daughter who becomes a stripper and a generation of strippers. So if your argument is that it shouldn't be stigmatized and that there's nothing wrong with it, mm -hmm. why not be proud of it? Embrace it. Have a have it start a stripper company where you raise your daughters to be strippers. And if you would say no to that, if you would say no to that, why? All right. Well, when I said a generation of daughters to be strippers, I meant like on a broad scale. I'm not trying to enforce that. But why not? Why not? It's empowering. It's great for women, right? So not why not? Why not encourage that? Why should not? Not like, if they're not choosing it. Right? You see, but no, I'm not literally saying state enforced stripperdom. I'm just saying that there would be something shameful if you were to raise a lineage of people who ended up becoming prostitutes and strippers. And it's I like, would why? I raised my child to be anything that made them happy. You Even. know, and uh, I'm glad that though, is, that's interesting. Okay, I'm glad that you said that because I have another study here. Alf. Yeah, I don't know where Alf. Yeah, we lost Alf again. Right. But I have another I study here: sexual that. behavior and suicide attempts among adolescents age 25, uh, age 12 to 15, uh, from 38 countries, a global perspective. And what they found is that in, uh, let's see. The prevalence of sexual intercourse and suicide attempts in adolescents were 13.2% and 9.1% respectively. A positive association between sexual intercourse and suicide attempts was found in 32 of 38 countries. Having had multiple sexual partners was associated with increased odds of suicide attempts. Um, this is in the database of Science Direct published. This is a fairly recent study that was published in 2019. I suspect if you're not an an academic student, this will probably hidden behind a be hidden behind a paywall for you. Um, but yeah, this is uh, fairly. So You're it's got like based on like the data. We don't have to like go over like everything, but you can kind of do, like, yeah. We have data from thirty two out of thirty eight in thirty two out of thirty eight countries in which this study was conducted. Mm -hmm. They found that having sex between the age of twelve and fifteen makes you more likely to kill yourself. Having multiple partners within that time frame makes you much more likely to try and kill yourself. I feel like that's like a different conversation, though. Well, well it, as but, sex becomes what, commodified and exactly. popularized and normalized, children imitate adulthood. It's like I lost my virginity when I was 13 years old. Uh, and I know quite a number of people who fit into that category. Damn. And <laughs> I lost my as virginity. see children. Children play at grown-ups. That's the thing. Yeah. And when the children turn on the television or they turn or they pull up a website on their computer and they see grown-ups doing things, they're going to try and emulate those things. I don't see but, why uh, I don't see why Ruby you see a disconnect between normalization of sex work and pornography and younger and younger and a younger and younger age of 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 having sex. Like if if Charles's point is that the younger you have sex, and Charles, this isn't against you, I'm just saying that mm -hmm. like, statistically speaking, the younger you have sex for the first time, it, it becomes more problematic in terms of how you, um, the rate at which you contract STDs, your pair bonding abilities, uh, the likelihood of you getting divorced down the road. If, you're, if you are promoting a society that normalizes these things, I don't know why you would be surprised with the results. Do you see what um, I mean? Like. Like if we were to well, just what do you raise mean by, like normalize because we, yeah, we're kind of jumping around to like fucking when you're a kid, we have always had like adult a separation between adult things that adults enjoy and children things. Children are curious; they try to find access right. To it. But like, I can pull up adults, a never-ending list of you know, examples on ones... Twitter of. Oh, I'm sorry. What? Oh well, it's just adults. That's where the parents come in and monitor what yeah. the kids access you yeah, know? And yeah like what, okay let's, yeah. Quick, quick, can we quick make question, some quick question. what what then what is the end goal of this argument are you saying we should ban porn so kids don't see it you know what i what think that's and if you were if okay. well if that's what i'm asking what what is the actual i, mean, I actually am in favor of banning porn mm -hmm. look here's the thing here it's it's i think it's more nuanced than that i don't this is my mm -hmm. i don't know that that glenn controls will agree with me here i do think that the ban porn movement i think there's nuance there Am I in favor of a social movement that um, shames usage of porn and makes it like, hey, why are you looking at that kind of stuff? 
yes, I'm for that. Now, what I would be more in favor of is some type of age verification yeah. um, mm -hmm. online, making sure you're above the age of 18. Like mm -hmm. if we if we have the technological abilities to be able to do face tracking and social con so social tracking and all this stuff they're talking about, we very clearly have the ability to be able to verify someone's age before they yeah. look at something without just clicking yes, I'm above eighteen. These these well, actions of looking at porn are are they have ripple effects that just saying we'll just let people do what they want that doesn't cut it because there are hundreds of years of consequences that you get from socially and sexually degenerate people. Like, it's not as simple as just saying, let them watch the site. No, we're living through that right now. I, I think Link wanted to say something. So Sorry. I think we need I to set up some engine. basic <laughs> premises here that to see where we agree and disagree, because I feel like mm -hmm. we're... Um, so I think we all have different nuanced opinions on this. Yeah, it's, it's right, right. So like, as a basic premise, um, would you, ex would you uh, accept the fact that things that are more tolerated and acceptable and normalized and even promoted in society are going to therefore propagate the continuation of those things and propagate more of it, Ruby or, and um, Alf, I guess. Yeah, I guess, I mean, it depends on the certain kind of thing because I feel like just the way, you know, people are like any kind of, I, I don't think that if prostitution was just another job and destigmatized that all of a sudden we'd have this mess increase there might be like a increase of people who wanted to do it and then felt like they shouldn't or it was stigmatized um but so far as propagating uh i don't i don't know i'm missing that. like i i could be wrong but i think this is where you you are coming from ruby and maybe alf too and i understand uh -huh. this as you don't necessarily it sounds to me like you don't necessarily want to expand the like amount of people that are new people joining the sex work, but you want to, you feel like it's inevitably going to happen on some level and you want to protect the people who are working within that industry, right? Correct. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And in that sense, I would take, I would almost view it as like, we should decriminalize uh, sex work, but you don't, you want to be very careful with decriminalize and like keep people safe versus promote and encourage that as a viable career option. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not for promoting it as a career yeah, option, but, but like, I don't mind normalizing it. I view it myself. I think that's the same thing. Normal. But they're, they're, they're literally, they're, exactly. And that, I think that's the disconnect right capital, there. But to me, it's capitalism. It's supply and demand. There's a demand. People are supplying it. And okay. I, but, you know. So should the market do, do market forces dictate what the kind of society we want to live in or no, should our I, market I would, serve the kind of society, the society we, want to, we want to live in is a, a country where we have liberty and freedom and the pursuit of happiness. That is the yeah, United States. No, no. Yes. Yes. Anyway, you know, no, because literally I, no. Yes. Um, yes. Right, yes. Example, I have a question. I, <laughs> That's what I, 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 I respect you, Alf, but that is literally just. I can't hear what Ruby said. One at a time. Let Ruby go. Hey, time out guys. All right. I can no, no, no. mute you. I might go on a power no, trip. Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck. What was I saying? I fucking forgot. Oh, As but, a sex like, worker, so you I probably are chasing like, that power trip, frankly. <laughs> I would say that in general, one of my like moral axioms is I feel strongly about you know reducing harm and suffering, increasing happiness, and also I feel strongly about like bodily Maybe Jordan autonomy. Peterson? <laughs> but I'm sorry. You're the Jordan B here. Okay, that has like, I already okay. said in the Discord that has no relation to Jordan Peterson. This is literally Jordan and my last name starts with a B. There you but, go. So I believe in like sensible <laughs> regulations of these things. The main thing that really bothers me that's happening now is I see a resurgence of sensible regulations sex workers online. Wait, repeat that? I didn't hear you. Oh, I'm seeing like one of the things that made me want to talk about this is there's a resurgence of negativity harassment towards sex workers on a mm -hmm. personal level you know talk about it on like a societal level but I, it's there's so much vitriol to it so what i want is for it to just be like morally neutral and i no. want to understand why this huge emotional response charles to yeah um so regarding sex work and the commodification of sex there are legal consequences there there are legal and philosophical ramifications to the if the american legal system 
recognizes sex as a monetizable service with a quantifiable monetary value, right? If, if we say prostitution is legal, you can pay someone for sex. That means that, oh, I'm sorry if you hear the dogs barking. Uh, that means that rape is an act of theft. When a man rapes a woman, he has stolen a service and that service is valued. At, I used to work at a subway that was mm -hmm. surrounded on all sides by hotels off of an interstate exit. And I had quite a number of sex workers come into the subway. The cost of employing a sex worker for the act of sex is somewhere between $75 and $150, unless they're one of the more expensive ones. If that is the case, then rape is now petty theft. Wait, no, hold on. Wait, Charles, like... wait, no, let Charles – wait, no, let Charles finish. He's – he's. I get – what – yeah, what yes, saying, just let him go. Let him go really quick. Let him go really quick. <laughs> equivalent the, thing no but it is equivalent if, 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 because if, you're commodifying sex and you're you're attributing your, a dollar yeah, amount to it, it it's your body it's still a personal <sighs> thing that the person should have full control over and if they're they engaging should, in so sex work and it helps he's a, he the the hypothetical rapist in this scenario has assaulted this woman that's a crime he's committed battery that's a crime and he has stolen a service that is valued at between yeah. 75 and hundred and fifty dollars that is petty theft well i guess but then it would still okay. be rape so and we, then everything else too and then but, I guess but there should be something rape to and then there are all kinds of there are is all kinds the, of other things is that the case in the netherlands there are all kinds of other things it, that trickle in through the legal system i don't even think we need to go there well, well, i want to address the netherlands yeah, doesn't that's a argument to me yeah. that's I an I'm just point. saying that's a new uh, the reason i like that is because it's something that's just not talked about yeah it's and, and, and here's and here's the thing here's here's the problem here's the problem what so charles is boss here's, jordan hold on here's the thing can you can you hear me yeah, I can hear you. I can hear Here's you. the thing with the point Charles is bringing up. He's bringing up legal ramification. And I, Alf, I do see your point. Mm -hmm. I see your point. You're saying like, oh, that doesn't happen in the Netherlands. Yeah. Well, also, <laughs> the Netherlands is not as, uh, what's the word, uh, like judicious, um, that we're very legalistic as we are in the United States. If the United States completely, nor like, like to the extent Charles is talking about videos worth 75 and sex is worth this and let's normalize this. You will get a case where it's like, no, I didn't rape her. I just stole a hundred bucks from her basically because that's the rate at which I can pay a, I can legally pay this person. I don't think somebody would, that would win never that play case. out. You could, reality. you that's could, the defense, you defense could defense make that will make case. that argument. It will make it. They oh, will yeah. make it. Can I, it you only need one arguments. judge. Yeah, ahead, Ruby, you were saying, your your main area of uh, issue with this mm -hmm. kind of con uh, conversation is that you feel like the hate and vitriol coming from men is especially prominent now online, right? Yeah, and even from women too. I only joined Twitter recently, and you know it's it's bad. It's a hell. <laughs> oh, Twitter's it's... just a place for all of us to be mean to one another. That's all that's well, for. Well, I've noticed, and to just kind of like say like shitty like shit post basically, yeah. <laughs> like. But I've yeah. noticed Twitter. These, I like, love it. The new fortune. Like, people will find an individual Slowly, woman, yeah. you know, and try to dox her. They'll go and find like there's whole forums dedicated to doxing women who are in the industry. And it's not just men who do this because not to mention the Colfax report. That thing is horrible. Let me ask Colfax you, why do you think that horrible. is a common occurrence? Horrible. I well, my because for me, I truly I'm just trying to understand the logic of it because I'm just trying to get a I'd like to understand even if I disagree. But so my philosophy on why there's this big emotional response is because of the kind of like evolutionary trait that men evolved, you know, to uh, want to be derogatory towards promiscuous mm -hmm. women because at the time they had no other way to verify their opportunity <laughs> except to no. control a woman. No. And then for no. women, they hate it because it's a perceived sexual threat. That's just my little... Okay, my so... Little I disagree. Idea. Hard I'll, disagree. But, okay. I mean, Do you think... Okay, so let, let's say I can grant you that that's a factor in it. Mm -hmm. And by the way, by the way, this is all... Uh, I shouldn't even have to say this, but of course I don't support harassing women. I don't support doxing right. women. I don't support this kind of behavior, right? Yeah. But when we're talking about things on a societal level, we don't talk about whether or not it's right or wrong. We talk about why it's happening. Mm -hmm. So I, would, I can grant you that there might be like, that's a factor. But do you, would you also grant me 
that it's also a factor that the increase in the amount or at least in the accessibility of sex work, which maybe we can say most men disapprove of for X, Y, and X and Y reasons is a factor in them lashing out in this sort of uncivilized way against these specific models. Like in other words, they don't want that to be acceptable in society. And so they're lashing out in that way. That's well, that's the reasoning that like when I talk to these people individually, it's like they're doing, you know, what like SJWs on the left do. It's like they're trying to change a social norm by using shaming, you know, to try to alter it that you know, that way. But who decides the social norm is what I'm saying. You're deciding that sex work is a social norm that we should accept. And I'm saying they're deciding it's not a social norm that we don't yeah. accept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I disagree with them because I and I feel like any time with something like that, wouldn't you want to lean towards freedom than to lean towards restricting rights? No, you? that's what I literally that's what I literally just got done telling Alf. Alf thinks the solution to all of society's ills and it's uh all of its problems is if you give people more freedom they will choose the right thing no most people are room temperature iq and just want to go with the easiest level of thinking and so, and i'm not saying that to anyone in the stream i'm just saying that in general the average person you talk to will just go just let people do what they want and we'll be fine no that is not where we're at right now that is not where we're at. No, no, well, the way I see it, where I, what it. I see it is whether we're fine or not, that's freedom. That's the cost of it. Then I, then, it's not going to work I, out. Then, no, I don't want unrestrained yeah. freedom then. Should, should we? We're not just talking freedom. Has society, got, has society gotten better or worse since we've allowed the Okay, okay. okay. Wait, wait a second. Ruby, 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 let me address that. Depends on your perspective. Let, 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 let me address that. Uh, I don't uh, think by any measure society's gotten better. R Increase Ruby anti here has usage. You thought oh, it was better in the eighties right. when people right. Ruby here has brought up the concept of bodily autonomy. Hold on, we'll go. Hold on, Al. Al, Al <laughs> hold on, we'll go back in a second. I'll, I'll let Charles go. Right. Ruby has brought up the subject of bodily it. autonomy. Yeah, yeah. So it, it stands to reason that a woman has uh, autonomy over her body. A man has autonomy over his body. The two of them can negotiate an exchange and, and like you know contract theory essentially like we can enter a contract okay so i can it, under this type of a system uh, a hypothetical person would be able to go and say to a, a a sex worker i don't just want to enlist you for this evening i want you to sign this contract of sexual exclusivity you will only have sex with me for 10 years Mm -hmm. And I'll pay you a hundred thousand dollars a year Sounds for like those marriage on a smaller scale. Yeah, we'll, we'll, well wait that, for then it. If, if she willingly enters the contract, you know, knowing all the people right. The if person, she then... willingly enters the contract, so all I have to do now is find a woman who's in a position where she's willing to sign a contract that is transferable, and I have a one hundred thousand dollar a year contract for ten years, I mean, and I then take that that transferable contract that she willingly signed and then I go and sell it to another person for one million two hundred thousand dollars and now I have transferred this woman's bodily autonomy which she willingly signed over to me to someone she probably would not have consented to do that with and if she violates that contract she is in breach of contract by giving the contract no like i said all i have to do is get one who is willing to sign a transferable contract like sports oh, well, players sign and they're knowledgeable on it then i think that should be legal yeah. i don't so really i get to exploit it. the impoverished women well, who are desperate and are willing to put their to name what you know, they'll sign ball. anything that puts food in their belly I that's get to buy and sell them now. That's the, how the world is so right now. We yeah. have two arguments going on right now. We have a legal argument, which I'm not too like, I, I don't know. I don't know very much about. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not have a, that one. The societal yeah, level. I, yeah. I'm having, I my argument is more like philosophical. Like what kind of world do you want to live in? So should right. we, do you guys want to do both arguments at the same time? Or do you want to pick one and go with it? Yeah, I guess pick one because I feel like we're getting like scattered. Because here's the thing with the with all all Charles is trying to raise here with the legal argument is and this is my opinion, this is my takeaway from your argument, Charles, is like we aren't considering the legal ramifications of when you commodify something as as 
I don't even know the word for it as transcendent as sex. Like there's a reason we value sex and putting a value on it is like putting a value on, on, on someone's soul or some, or something deeper. I don't even know what I'm trying to say there, but you know what I mean? Like you're trying to come out of the essence, like Mm -hmm. you're, you're trying to put a price on something that is so important that that yes, we've tried to do it in the past, but it's been so swept under the rug that it's like prostitution, oldest profession, but we need to kind of swipe it to the side because that's not something we should really endorse, but it happens. It's the core yeah. of my concern is that once once this becomes as it becomes normalized and as it becomes commodified, the law is going to get involved. And we are not Norway. Inevitably. We are Inevitably. not Finland. Nope. We are Maybe America. We and in America we have a court a, system where you can sue just like yeah, the, there's so many hypotheticals. So, with, like, yeah, that we don't even have. About, let's talk about just like the philosophical, like how we feel about it. Going At the core it. of both the legal and societal argument, I think it comes down to what is the value of a woman's body, and I my this is this is why I take the position I do is because I feel like sex work, in and of itself places a monetary commodified transactional value on a woman's body and, and i'm saying no, there's no, nothing that should be transactional body, about sex nothing. your body sex uh your feelings towards sex your feeling towards your body are infinitely valuable you cannot put a value on it and when out of necessity sex work happens in a society we should yes protect the women but we should make a very fine point to not encourage that because encouraging it propagates the idea that your body and how you feel about yourself sexually is something you can define and reduce down to a number numerical value and money is ultimately pretty meaningless itself by the way compared to the inherent value of there is of life which i believe exists and what's funny is that and what's and side point what's funny is that leftists automatically become capitalists when you start talking about things I, like only I've always been a capitalist. you no, know what I, I mean like it's, it's like you guys, guys, you guys hate capital. capitalism let me just address the but then all of a sudden when we talk about sex work it makes more money I'm gonna start muting you fuck sorry so what you're just saying I feel like you can say that same argument about any type of labor when people say like, oh, you're selling your body. Is a masseuse selling their body no. by using mm, it yeah. to give someone pleasure? Like, Here's, a therapist okay, let me respond. Exploiting, I know? see your point. So I will say, yes, uh, any kind of labor is propagating a version of the same issue. So yeah. I agree with yeah. you that working a minimum wage job, your value as a person should not ever be tied to the wage you're given. You're worth more yeah. than that. But I will say that with sex work, again, I feel like you're taking it a step further because the feelings, the passion, you know it. I mean, we all know it. We have with intimacy, we have with like loving someone, something, sex. Let's not deny that that's more meaningful to us getting than, your tire changed or than, getting... than how much we exercise or how much. Yeah, right. There's that, something very that's where I would draw the line. about it. That's just an argument of perspective, though. In the first place, that that's just an argument of perspective. Because you know? not everybody feels the same way about sex as you do. Yeah, that's that's the whole point. Is that people have you guys could say it all you want that you okay, but do you want to live in a world open, where sex is meaningful or where it's meaningless? Uh, I don't care either way. I like see that. No, okay, you don't care. Blink, blink, excellent. That's it. I care. You don't want. I care because I want. If I have kids, I want them to live in a socially stable world. Alf says, I don't care what don't the world care. looks I like going forward. I world. do care. Let Charles <laughs> talk. Care. Let Charles talk. Because he's right. been waiting. Wait, can I just say one thing? Yes. I want to live in a world where people are free to create their own meaning and values mm-hmm. of their own experiences. I don't want to okay. project a value on everyone else that sex is this like beautiful, magical, coitus moment between a husband and his wife. Like, but it should. That's, but would we? Okay, let me. Freaky let, shit. That's I'm, your prerogative. I want to. I want to. Well, <laughs> wait, let Charles, right, Charles talk. Let Charles go. Charles go. Also, there's right. 69 um, people watching. So. We were talking about like <laughs> attaching 69. value to a. <laughs> we were, oh, nice. Um, yeah. We were uh, we were talking about uh, people it's, attaching value to themselves based on their work and how you shouldn't do that. You know, if you work a minimum wage job, that doesn't mean that you're a minimum value human being. But when there is a woman 
and this woman struggles to get any man to look at her in real life. And then she turns on her computer and she sees that this other woman is getting paid thousands of dollars a week by thousands of men across the world just to be looked at. What do you think that does to her self-value? To the wife's self-value? No, 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 no. no, you, no, have, no. you have a woman who cannot get, who, who struggles to gain the attention of men in real life. A lonely woman who, for whatever reason, struggles to find intimacy and just struggles for, to find attention from men at all. And that's what she's desiring. And then she turns on her computer and she sees that there's this other woman who gets paid thousands of dollars a week by millions of men across the world just to be looked at by them. What that's, do you think that does to her sense of self-worth? There's always going to be people who are jealous of other people yeah. who have something they don't. Self you could say that about supermodels or say, like, I'm not good at guitar, but when I see this guy shred a guitar, like, oh, my God, yeah. like, how does that make me feel? And people are paying thousands just to listen to him, like. Well, th that's the thing is that guitar is a skill. Um, modeling, so it's making uh, yourself uh, hot. So, that takes a lot no, it's not. Okay, yeah. I want to yes, address no, the genetic lottery. Yes, it does. Uh, some there's level no skill to be a lottery. Listen, right, listen, listen, listen. There's genetic no lottery. Being you won the genetic lottery of being hot. There's no skill there. It's like IQ. It's like high. It's like being high IQ. You literally won if you're high IQ. Guys, we're we're getting in the weeds again. Listen, let's stay let's stay consistent. Okay, so. Ruby said earlier, she wants a world where people can derive their own meaning in life, correct? Yeah. So therefore, there should be no intrinsic meaning or value to sex, even if that's how most people feel right now. Like, mm. do you agree with what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You want to shift from people having, feeling like there's intrinsic meaning to sex to not, to removing that meaning. And then you want people to create their own meaning on whatever they want. Yes. Hey, Ruby, Ruby, can I speak? I can I ask you a question, Ruby? Wait, when this happens, I like lose track of the initial question. I don't think he heard Glink's question. Okay. Uh, yeah, so wait, can, you can said you earlier, oh, okay. we, when we were talking about what commodifying sex does to the meaning of sex, you were saying you want a world where meaning is derived, is subjective, right? Yeah, and we live in that world, you know. We, I, well, I we live in the world to some people, some people don't. But anyway, anyways, uh, so I'll, t I'll say this. By... In your mind, I feel like it's more of this libertarian perspective of let people do as they may. But I would say to that point, you're actually making the market forces dictate everything. So in other words, mm -hmm. the value and meaning will just naturally go towards where there's money and resources. Mm -hmm. So therefore, our value is reduced to money and resources. So you end up being the value of sex. Capitalist. So the world in which people derive meaning from anything, it'll just turn into the world where money, you are the number mm -hmm. that you people pay for on OnlyFans or on whatever. That is your value. Uh, if you don't have a higher value that's intrinsic. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm fine well, with I that. don't think you can. <laughs> it's a nice idea to have something intrinsic. I just don't think it exists, you know? And well, also, okay, I, I, I disagree with that. Like a big time capitalist, I would like to structure our I disagree. society in a much better way than letting it to be the whim so of nothing, the market. So does anything you know? matter inherently? Nothing matters inherently? And then when um, you... inher Well, are you religious or? Where do you get like but, your? But no, hold on. Hey, but hold on. Let Belief. me. Like, yeah, wait, wait, can, I, can I jump yeah. in really quick? So you believe? Okay, really, really quick. I want to stay on this. I want to stay on this. Yeah. No, exactly. I'm. I'm gonna. Okay, go for it. Go for it. Here's the thing. This is what I was saying earlier. The points that I'm making are not. I'm not arguing them on a religious level. You just said in response to Glink are you religious it's not even about that it's about right. the societal right. impacts of the ideas that you're saying should be espoused should be accepted should be normalized what we're saying is these will have a very clear and obvious negative impact that is currently happening that we clearly see with the destruction of the nuclear family and you're sitting there saying no if we just normalize it a little more then everything will be fine and we're saying we value the nuclear family over freedom yeah that's kind of a man, though, the that's 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 let's give let's give ruby a second that's All a right. let's give ruby well, a second so first off, i'm not saying like oh you're religious and like that you know but, you just, but when you, you talk just about intrinsic that. value of life, when you talk about there's this inherent like meaning or there's this objective like morality mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. meaning that we should all, you know, mm -hmm. we can all agree upon. 
No, I don't believe that exists because I'm an atheist who believes in science. Ooh. I don't see how you can, can get that kind oh, of you, science. You're not an atheist. An art. Science is the study you're of the not natural an atheist. world. It doesn't tell oh, you so how to live. No it atheists. doesn't provide purpose. I know, but I'm just saying what, that's why you create a person creates their own purpose and meaning. Hold on, I want to talk. I have another okay, Charles, go. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. To 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 Jordan, well, just because someone yeah. asks a question isn't a, isn't an accusation. She's asking because she doesn't yeah. know where the interest Valley came from. So she okay. said, "Are you religious? Is that where it came from? Or okay. if not, but it's, another... all, I'm, all I'm saying is that it's funny that I... it boils back down to religion when Glink never said like, as a Catholic, we should well, do this. It always does. Question. I know. The first that's why I, I need to and, ask and that, because that, when I triggers, start with religious people, it triggers, we're gonna it, hit a block. It triggers my response. It it triggers my response factor. Because every time I try to advocate for moral responsibility and moral normalcy, people say, oh, you're just a religious extremist. And it's like, no, I am just looking at the impacts that this level of libertarianism that Ruby advocates for has led to. That's all I'm okay, saying. Charles, go. Charles, right. go. Charles has been raising his all right. um, Yeah. R Ruby, uh, Ruby has said that she is an atheist and, and she believes that um, – uh, value is subjective and that's false. Both of those things are false. First of all, you're not an atheist. There are no atheists. Oh, <laughs> Bullshit. <God>. Um, <laughs> secondly, oh, oh, okay. Does war exist? As the concept war exists as something that people do. Yes. Oh, oh, you can call it a concept. Sure. Um, like does war exist? Yes or no. War is a word. Yes or no. Does war exist? Yes, war exists and happens in our reality as we describe the term. It that is one God you believe in. Congratulations, you're not what? an atheist. That is that is a ridiculous statement, man. I'm sorry, <laughs> but that's a no, 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 no. All <laughs> all of human civilization for thousands of years agreed that war was a god. Why is war a god? Because you must fear it, you must respect it, and you must bend your society to the understanding that war is a force that is more powerful than you. And if no one in your society serves war and no one in your society serves war properly, your society is going to die. I now you can call, you can use a different word. You right, can say that it's a concept. This, this like, I don't... No, 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 hang on a second. Let me finish here. You can this say that it's that. a if concept. You believe in war, or you believe in God? That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> Let me finish here. Let me it's finish so here. Good. Let me finish here. No, because this this takes if... a long time to explain this crazy weird thing. That's no, 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 no. <laughs> Let me finish here. You can call it whatever <gasps> oh. you want. You can call it a concept. You can call it an archetypal thing. You like Jordan Peterson does whatever you want. I use the term God. Doesn't matter. That's a symbol. My point is that you must live in fear and service of this thing or your society will die. And that's where intrinsic value comes from, in survivability, okay? So, like survivability dictates intrinsic value. If what you're doing facilitates the destruction does that make sense? <laughs> if what you do um, wait, can someone facilitates the destruction, I have no idea. I have no idea. Can I? Okay, I want to. If I, what, <laughs> Charles? I feel like your points are. I kind of understand where you're going with it. I just feel like we don't need to even go that far. Yeah. yeah it's be honest. Like, okay. Wait. Like here's the way I'll say it. Okay. Very very simple terms. So, your belief. When you ask if I'm religious, mm -hmm. I'll tell you I un I operate under a set of beliefs. Mm -hmm. So if I believe that life has intrinsic value, if I believe there is inherent meaning, then I will operate in such a way that imitates that. Mm -hmm. If you believe that there is no intrinsic value, if you believe everything is subjective, then people will operate in a way that, that's the, that uh, enacts that. Mm -hmm. and, I'll, and I'm telling you that the end result of no intrinsic meaning to anything means that market forces will dictate that everything can be commodified and reduced down to a monetary value. And I'm saying my belief system is such that monet you cannot put a monetary value on human life or meaning, and therefore 
that's the kind of world I would want to live in. I don't want to live in a world where everything is commodified. Yeah, I would love so, to live in a world where people don't sell their life by the hour for minimum wage. I agree. I like. I. I think it's. But that world is the result know? of lack of but then, but inherent then also meaning. Ruby by, it's and the, you know result of many many factors. By, you know. By the logic of you know, peop, consumers are paying for OnlyFans and paying for porn and paying for browsers, all the crap that's online. The same line of logic could be used to justify a world where, let's say, every car on the street broke down at once, right? Like, like internalize this example. So, like, let's say every car at the same time broke down at once, Isn't and that and that led to a boom in auto repair industry, and the auto repair industry made Buku's worth of money. That wouldn't be a good world because people's cars would be broke down. In my world example, in my worldview example, the car is the family, and that's what's being broke down all at once. Just because people are making money off of an industry is not proof that it should be normalized. Like, why would I want to normalize auto porn, repair? Though, for why do you think porn is what has like broken up? There's so many. I'm not. No, no, no. And I think that I think that's a fair point. I'm not putting it all on porn. I'm not putting it all on OnlyFans. But the things that you're trying to normalize are are logical conclusions that you would draw from normalizing premarital sex, not caring about the nuclear family, <laughs> not prioritizing uh, marriage among people. What you that I don't think you're consciously doing this. I just think the things you advocate for lead to where we're at now. And all we're saying is like, what if we had drawn the line at X point? Uh, X like. Do you see what I mean? You if create we, the world you want to live in. Exactly. If we it, yeah. exactly. Yeah, we it, do. But but what does it create? I hear Alf laughing for some reason. Oh, what, does it, what does it create when you're normalizing these things? It does not lead to a healthy society. What do you guys think that I like? What all I want is for that people have the individual liberty and rights to do what they want. You want every sexual service. The other side of I rights wanna, like, is responsibility. You, know. you cannot have one without the other. Or else you but, live in a broken society. And Rights not, and responsibility shill, go hand in hand. Not to shill, but I think that that's what Jordan B. Peterson. That's uh, exactly that's, what he says, and it's why he got. Correct. And I, I know we're in this this space right now of anti Jordan B. Peterson, and I laugh at him a lot. But there are a lot of things that he said were so deeply true, and that's why I got the following he had. The other side of the rights coin is the responsibility coin. Yep. R people like Rube and. I'm not trying to attack you Wait too hard. <laughs> People, well, okay, fine. People like Ruby, you want to totally have the rights card, but you have no responsibility to maintain the society that you bring in. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, so, so never... what it means is, I'll explain what it means. The society that produces the ability for people to have rights was only made possible by people who also had responsibility. In other words, rights don't come from nowhere. They come from people who are protecting a, a society that allows it to be free and open. But I, I know we create human rights, we create social norms and government regulations, but I don't see how this, because yeah, we're how is that arbitrarily an like, drawing the line at like sex work. Like, okay. You it's not arbitrary. We're, no, it's actually not arbitrary because, in, and here's the other part. I, well, no, it's not the other part. This is the part. We're not drawing the line at sex work. If we had our way, that we would have a line way back. From this level of degeneracy, but anytime we I draw, feel like the, my computer the... starts loading as soon as JB makes. Gosh, yeah, he's cutting out. I guess he has the same issues I do. Any point we try to draw the line, you say no, not there. Okay. Just a little further. Don't draw it there. Maybe just two inches further, and then we never get to draw the line anywhere. Where would, like, where would you guys be okay with this? Where would you guys be okay with us drawing the line? Like, I'm not even, like, I don't care. My line is everybody should be free to do what they could do unless they're taking away someone else's freedom. It's the golden rule. You know what I'm saying? Do not impose yourself on someone else's freedom. That is such a mealy mouth position. No, no, that's a fair, let me let me address that. That's the U.S., man. Ruby, do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, Ruby. I agree that we structure our society. It's not the golden rule. the maximum personal liberty, but then we create regulations so that your personal liberty doesn't infringe on someone else's personal liberty. And then we create social norms, which are more malleable. And I see you guys want a more social norm, I think, that's leaning towards, you know, stigmatizing this sex. So if the pervasiveness and accessibility of 
sex work with things like OnlyFans, mm -hmm. as a result, is creating more lonely and isolated men and more psychologically traumatized women. Is that something that is infringing on people's rights explicitly? Maybe not, but is it a force of good or a force of negative for society? Mm -hmm. That would be something that we could look into so social norms of changing. I think that there is a crisis of like young men specifically because so much shit has changed in 50 years. For me as a woman, my opportunities opened up. I can be this and that, whatever. But for men, their opportunities kind of like shrunk and it, it, they, they don't have like a role or purpose, you know? So it's easier for them to look back and be like, oh, you know, back 50 years ago, I want, it, I want that society where I had the wife, you know, and the kids and everything was perfect. But I think mm. instead of that, they should be looking forward, you know, mm. to create a better identity. And I don't, so I think that's an issue that's just like, has much more Ooh. broader. So you get to decide what's a better identity. identity. No. I think, okay. I think well, the way the, the identity computer... that they wanted, the, the identity that they want, you say, oh no, you shouldn't want that. You should want something better. Um, well, and I had, a, I had a question. Well, infringes on my rights. Uh, yeah. How much do you know about it, Weimar right? Germany? Yeah, but well, should we? Uh, okay, right. really no, quick. Really we don't quick, need really to go quick. there. No, sorry, yeah. <laughs> really quick. I want to say something really quick. Charles is. Do you agree, protein. Ruby, <laughs> that a society where men and women are cooperating with each other is this better than a society where they're competing with each other? Yeah, of course. Okay. I think so all then, all interpersonal relationships. Yes. Then the well-being of you can't just look at it as, like you were saying, as a woman, my opportunities have opened up and all that. It's like, that may be true, but at the cost of what? And that also applies for men, by the way. If men are, you know, if, if they're taking away some opportunities or freedoms or, or whatever from women and hurting women in some way, that should also be addressed. But what I'm saying is they shouldn't be competing with each other. They should be cooperating, balancing, balancing each other out. And I think that's the whole point of talking about there's certain roles that men are better at, certain roles that women are better at. The whole point isn't to be like women are less than men because they're certainly not. They're just as vital in society. But the way we work with each other is a little bit different because men and women are different. Well, but I the, not in a like, like people act like, you know, like women are from Mars, men are from Venus. Like this is like <laughs> junk science. You know, we've seen mm -hmm. that. There are physical differences. Men are 15% larger. Men have like more um, like gray matter. Women have more white matter. Like there's, you know, infrant, like those differences, but there's so much overlap. And it's like right now we just got like, all right, women have the freedom to do whatever. So we're trying to like counteract that by doing these affirmative action things. And yes, it's going overboard. We don't need 50-50 everywhere. That's absurd. You know, mm -hmm. there's going to be differences. But I believe that we should just let that naturally play out, you know, yeah, but also that's, understand that's that there Look, are, you know. This entire argument boils down to one thing. There's the group of us who think that this argument that cares about society wants to get better, of course, but the way they want to do it is to, it has to be made to be better. Where the, where me and Ruby are talking about is that we want people to choose to make it better. We don't want to make them make it better. If society goes down because they chose wrong, then they chose sure. wrong. Sure, but do you think that normalizing evil will make people less evil? What evil? What's evil? Explain. Explain to me what the degenerate, evil is. Degenerate, degenerate sex, multiple sexual degenerate partners. Degenerate sex is evil. How? How? Can you explain that to me? Actually, here, let I'm me give let me give a good example. Let me let me try to pull one. Do you think? <laughs> Look, it all well, comes down to this. I don't know what I can say on YouTube, but I. I don't. I don't even want to go there. I, actually, you know what? Fuck it. I will. You know what? We're on stream. I'll do a thing. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Anal. Anal. Do you sex? think? Is that so do you think? Degenerate? Do you think? Do you think something like rape porn should be totally normalized? No. No. Well, why? Why? They why? Be why? No. 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 Oh wait. No. Oh, hold on. No. Why? No. Why? Why? They are, they are acting or like real rape porn. Yeah. I, it. It literally doesn't matter if you are like getting off on like rape happening online should that Whether be like totally fine simulated or not because I, you're enjoying it I you enjoy watching that no, well i mean there's movies with rape in it and you enjoy yeah. those movies right why not but as it's, long it's as a you part know of a movie i'm talking about real. it used for the purpose of getting I'm, men I'm off fine with that. 
I'm fine. You're fine. Okay. Yeah. Shit that I don't see it as evil. See, like how would it be evil? That really <laughs> boils down. You have no moral. You have no look, moral. Look, 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 This is really yeah, simple. Straw man. I do have. If you don't view, no, you don't. Look, 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 look. Mm -hmm. If you don't think there's any intrinsic meaning to life, then the concept of evil is completely it's foreign. Subjective. No, wait, 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 totally wait, wait, foreign. Wait. You don't even think yeah, anything's wrong. I don't believe in objective morality. Okay, like, then that is the fundamental practices. disagreement. I want yeah, to yeah. Then, then, then you're going to get the good then, you, and objective then, then let me put let me put it in the words of Joaquin Phoenix and Joker. You mm -hmm. get what you fucking deserve. You're okay. going to get the society <laughs> you deserve if you don't care about okay. any forms of, more, but, of objective but, morality. The more you create the world, the more you deserve, and those people chose through free will and they chose what they wanted and ruby. i'm fine with that ruby because people chose it this is like children like you're gonna raise children exactly how you want them to and you're gonna spoil the shit out of them children have to make their own mistakes and learn from their mistakes just like society right, <laughs> so what you're pointing out is the you're just pointed out now you pointed out learn from their mistakes. So in other words, you're pointing out the responsibility and the right side. If you raise children with all the rights and freedom in the world and you give zero discipline, mm -hmm. they're not going to be well-adjusted members of society. They have to have rights, but they also need to have responsibility or else they're not gonna that's be- why there has to be a, That's why there has to be a middle point. There has to be a balance, right? I agree. You don't want people to just completely do what they want, but you don't also yeah. don't wanna tell them what to do and you want them to figure things out on their own. I you, agree. you can't just like, like, what Jordan's saying to me sounds like he just wants to be the dad of the country and tell everybody, no, this is what's right. You can't do this. You actually, know? But yeah, I do. I do because society. actually, you know what? I'm not even going to run from that label. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not even going to run from it. Go. I, hey, no, no, this is stupid. This is stupid. Total wait, respect, wait. Uh, Jordan. Okay. Total respect. Legally, 100%, I agree. We shouldn't have a father figure telling us what's right and wrong on a lot of things. No, no, right? I'll be, I'll be, I'll but, be daddy. I'll be daddy. But, but, but the, the whole point, the whole point of the responsibility, right? I'll be daddy. I'll tell everyone what needs to happen. Hold on, hold on. The whole point is <laughs> you deciding what you think is acceptable or okay or good or bad is where you draw the line. In other words, the line isn't drawn whether things are legal or not. Mm -hmm. It should right, be right. drawn because, like you said, we should be able to figure it out on our own. Yeah. Not by the law saying porn is illegal, but by saying, right. okay, this is not acceptable because it leads to this, this, and this. This is a bad thing. Do you get what I'm saying? Like that, the yeah. conversation we're having now is our responsibility yeah. to the society. I right. have a question I, th I think might make me understand your position more. Like, what is your solution? Because for me, the, the thing I feel most strongly about is that we should be discouraging people from targeting individual sex workers and shaming them and thinking that that's some Obviously, kind of world though. Um, but aside from that, which I don't think you guys are supporting, I'm just saying it's no. an issue I see no. a lot happening. Yeah. Um, but uh, like for you, Glink, what what is the solution for you? Like, how would you create a new social norm where like sex is more sacred? Like, how does that happen? You know, I think it happens by first instilling the idea in people that their lives are inherently meaningful and, in fact, infinitely meaningful. Like, I think every single person has so much potential, so much value that you can't place a number on it. And I think also that f I, I trust feelings. Like I, if I feel, you, we've all felt, you know, maybe in love with someone or felt strong feelings for someone. And I would never try to cheapen that feeling by saying, well, I can just get, I can just have an orgasm by, by doing this, or I can just simulate that by paying for it. I think that cheapens the value and, and my perspective of, of what I find meaning in, which is I find meaning through feelings. I know that sounds silly, but like, mm -hmm. no, it doesn't I, don't sound val I don't find meaning in numbers. I find meaning in how I feel about people in conscious experience. Mm -hmm. So instilling that idea in people would naturally create an environment where you don't, where the market forces are not fixated on commodifying everything. And instead we serve trying to create meaning out of life rather than trying to garner resources does that make sense it makes no, sense. no no that makes sense and it is it's you know i agree that a lot of the issues that we all care about could be resolved we just need to restructure society in a meaningful way because society we live in a fucking dystopian horror movie like we just do like it's yeah. you know and everyone's so used to it but it's extremely abnormal you know like where's the level of advertisements oh, and what was that I had a question. Where, where's the okay. opposite line? We were talking about where do you put the line? You were asking us, like, where do we put the line of what's, you know, what is what's good and what's not? 
Where's the opposite line? Like with OnlyFans, let's say, let's say OnlyFans didn't allow nudity and it was just women posing in, in skimpy outfits. Is that allowed? Or do you think that that's bad as well? To who, me or Charles? Anybody, anybody, anybody really, it's up to the whoever wants to. Uh, well, I, I, I wouldn't exactly, I think it's more like a spectrum type thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's not yeah. a matter of, this is exactly the point where I want things to stop. And that's in my mind anyways, it's more like, there's elements of things within this that are bad and the more extreme those get, the more they're going to increase. Um, so I guess it comes down to, again, to like root foundational principles mm -hmm. of in a way I could say the skimpy outfits is bad, but it's not as bad because it's not as extreme. Right. Well, um, women dressed in scantily clad outfits was not used as a psychological warfare tool. However, hardcore pornography has been used as a psychological yeah. warfare weapon several yeah, times so throughout has, the 20th so century. Heavy metal and Britney Spears should we ban them? Yeah. Oh well, that no, no, that's a, <laughs> you know? that's a different type of psychological warfare and a false equivalency. Britney Spears and heavy metal were used as psychological warfare tools through repetition, whereas hardcore pornography was used to psychologically degrade and uh, undermine the uh, what what what's the word? The, the esteem of the enemy. See, when Israel invaded Palestine during the Six-Day War, they blared hardcore pornography on all television and radio frequencies. And most of this, was most of this pornography uh, was of uh, women of Arab persuasion being sexualized by men of other. And yeah, that's... Though, right? <laughs> like, hmm? they have, they have, but there were Muslims, no? Uh, who were Muslims? The Palestinians? Yes. Like, we're getting... Yeah, they were getting sidetracked. <laughs> like, I'm getting... Like, I, I don't know yeah, this, this is, like, so beside noise. the point. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. no, 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 no like, like, really he, right? he asked abstract. where the line is. He asked where the okay. line is. And okay. for me, the line is drawn when this has such a profound okay. psychological effect that it can be used as a weapon against you. Maybe we should draw the line there. Just maybe. I'm not saying for sure, but maybe. Just maybe, if it has such a powerful impact on your mind that your enemies can use it as a weapon, you might not want to mess with it. Just a thought. And Ruby, please research Weimar Germany. Please. Actually, uh, Ruby, he's not. I. It's the only reason I cringed at that earlier is because it goes down a different rabbit hole. But the thing is, is like he's literally not wrong about Weimar. All of the transsexual, the transgender studies that are, that arise or were arisen in the late twenties and early thirties all came from the University of Berlin. Um, I which, don't want to get into like the. We're just talk the concepts the instead of like. Yeah, let's just, yeah. I'm sorry, man. The, like, they yeah. burned the books for a reason, bro. They burned the books for a reason. But it doesn't just because they burned the books for a reason doesn't make it a. Although a good thing, like look, you know, look, you're taking people's all, ability look, to learn. I know, I know, it sounds horrible <laughs> like, to ever to ever push back against progressivism. But it's like, play. no, I'm not saying that. All <laughs> I'm saying is that, all I'm saying, listen, here's my only point, is that there is a point that we should push back against the degeneracy of the left, and any pushback against the degeneracy is not neo-Nazism. It's not. Richard Spencer level type stuff. It's common sense stuff. It's like, hey, do you, and, and Ruby, you kind of said it earlier. Like, you're like, do I want my daughters? Would I want my daughters to be sex workers and pole dancers? And you were like, well, no. No, but it's I, like, I said no to would I want an entire generation to be like that, or would I go out of my way to encourage it? What I do would you encourage think that my daughter to, to be anything that made her feel? Feels if you're happy. look, she if you're if you're a leftist, if you're I wouldn't a leftist, turn out be like you got to be like mommy and no, it's not you. that. But if you're a leftist, which I think you are, okay, you wait. basically agree with the idea that what you show your children, they that's what they inevitably inevitably become, and that's actually the I'm line of our children porn. No, know. but. Why not? Why not? If there's nothing if wrong with it, bad, if there's not nothing wrong yeah. with it, then why not, Ruby? Because we can decide Ruby, the getting models, yeah, getting model. like, Ruby, you just okay. said. Hang on a second. If there's no implicit value to anything, then there's no implicit value. Uh, I'm sorry. You My said, computer you said slowed you want down your for a second, and I'm not sure who's talking right now. It, you're no, talking about, here, let Lincoln just 
go ahead and see. You said you want you would want your daughter to have a fulfilling life, right? Yes. Okay. Where do you think fulfillment comes from? It comes from, you know, finding your own purpose and meaning that's unique to you and your experiences. Hopefully from mm-hmm. coming from a stable, well adjusted background, you know? And then Do you think uh, that there are any that there's any framework for finding okay well i guess the answer would be no like here's the difference i think we both want the same thing yeah definitely. you're kind of saying you want people to find a meaningful life but the way that in which they get there should be completely up to them and is completely subjective right um to, i mean it's it's all extremely complicated but i, I mean yeah i'd say so yeah <laughs> I would say that's denying your own and my own and the experience lived experience. Like I could sit here, right. And play games all day, every single day and can try to convince myself that that's meaningful, but there's, there's a certain framework I can follow of what is and isn't more meaningful and fulfilling. So the fact that there, that exists in my own lived experience means that it's not completely subjective. Well, right. Yeah, that's Here's my question. Patterns of things that fulfill humans. We've been passing down this wisdom for generations. You know, a lot of times it's manifested in religion and you know taken and used to justify bad things. But in general, it's true. There are some like universal things that humans tend to enjoy and feel fulfilled by. You know, that comes to long-term life. fulfillment. Okay. Have, you know, okay. Yeah, that's called being... objectivity. Second, no, it's true. That is question. Not, Actually, that is that is Ruby, what obje- Ruby, that Ruby. is objectivity. Ruby, you. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to like dick ride Charles here, but he's <laughs> literally right there. That that feeling that you just said of like there is a deep sense of accomplishment and feeling that you completed something. Wait, that I'm is proof of JB. Let me let me let, 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 let me drive my own point home here. Humans All right, there's. Hang on a second. So there's no passed down, but it's right, not okay. objective. Ruby, question: If there is no objective value to anything, if there is no objective value to anything and porn isn't bad why not let kids watch porn because there is we as a society create we, we evolved to have social norms it's deeply embedded in us as social creatures I, i'm sorry society. uh, uh you, you... Uh, can you not hear me Dude, i think it's cut out on my end i can't hear what you're saying my connection's I, getting shitty too yeah I don't know. <laughs> anyway i hear you <laughs> <laughs> really quick what is this thing on the screen that's like this chat is this from your chat or something what is oh the... yeah i can click like any little thing and it like pops up yeah. there oh um, okay, yeah. <laughs> faraday <laughs> says jq incoming I, no, I, wasn't, I was not doing a jq thing i, 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 was, my I think they were talking about me jb well both who <laughs> That's why I try to stay away from like politicizing things. I think we could just talk purely on a conceptual right. level and get All right. to the well, purely conclusion. purely on a conceptual level. If there is no objective value to anything, then there's no objective value to to the innocence of a child, and there's no objective value to the psychological well-being of another human being. Yeah, so, actually, like let me. Well, no. Why ahead. would yeah. we deny children access to pornography if a pornography is not bad? B there is no objective value to or sanctity to childhood, innocence, psychological health. If none of that is real, then, then, like this is A plus A and B, if then, sorry, I just got out of oh symbolic logic class. No, I see your <laughs> point. I actually see your point. Like if there's no moral basis behind pornography, why not show two and three year olds like like BDSM, BBC, which they're doing, just which they're show doing. it to them. The same because reason we don't show them violent video games. We, I don't want to sit here and. Why argue would you have a moral objection against that either? We have a moral well, objection against that. We We're the ones who take a moral high ground can I, there. Can I, I respond to Charles real quick? You yeah. have no morals. Sorry, can I, but can listen, I respond to Charles? Can I respond to Charles? Society, I would like it if Al could respond to me. We can I respond to Charles? You said there's the values oh. in our society. It's not objective. It's a nice thought that things would be objective. That would mm-hmm. be nice, but just because you want something to be that way, it doesn't make it true. You know. Hold on, wait a second. Let me stop right there. Right there. You agreed earlier. The world we live in is shaped by us. So whether or not, 
the belief is everything, okay? If you believe there are objective things, then you will act in such a way that there are objective things. So you saying it's a nice idea that things are objective, okay, that is in itself enough. If it's a nicer idea that things are objective versus subjective, all that? you need is the power of belief in order to create the world where things are objective. Shouldn't we just strive to, you shouldn't we just, something look, look, objective. look, if, if the, no, 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 um, uh, Glink is right. Here's the thing. If your whole worldview is it would be great if everything was objective, then why not institute that policy? Why not make yes, it objective? Yes, you shape the world you live in. Why not shape it? Why uh, not just make it objective listen. that it's wrong for three-year-olds to view porn? Let me, let me but you're, no, hold on one second. Let her respond. No, let me, let me finish my point. No, no literally you stop because I'm going to forget what I'm going to say. Stop. All right. We at, Just because I don't believe that there's some moral objectivity uh, from, you know, that just exists, you know, that we all just feel doesn't mean that I choose to live in a society where we create rules and standards and governments that ch serve us. It doesn't mean that they're objective because our laws are always changing and updating. It's subjective and we're constantly trying to create a better society based on the environment. Right? But we're not talking about laws. Laws are not necessarily always moral. Laws are not God's ordained word. And I'm saying if we as a society shape it such that there is an objective good and okay, bad, as soon as any we will live in that society. Can I can I get a chance finally? Yeah, let us <laughs> so I have, uh, like, ability to hear you cuts out. I swear to God, I've missed every point made. <laughs> it's so your I, it's I, on uh, your end. Sorry. Charles is saying if we don't have intrinsic value, then why wouldn't we let children watch porn? But we create that value. It doesn't That's what I'm saying. Value. I agree with you what but, you're but saying, Glenn, but what you're saying is that, that that turns it objective, but it doesn't. I'm just taking it a step further than you guys. Okay, I'm saying you can't make something if we create the value based on our beliefs, then why would you want to believe that everything is subjective and has no inherent meaning? Why not operate under the presupposition that there is inherent intrinsic value because then the value of life because is not redu redu reduced down to numbers? Because that value, offering, you know. because right, that value offer. changes. Throughout society, we've had multiple so, of value. So here's, value so is determined over, by what the society right, views as a whole. This is why we have laws. We all decide on these things. We all make votes to decide on what is right, what is wrong. We work together at this, but we no, can't all agree on it. So we have no, to. No, here's where I person. disagree. There, over the last year since I've become, and this is like a very, this is very anecdotal. This is very personal. So I, I will preface it with that. Over the last three or four months since I've become in, I've, I've entered the online world. What I've tried to do is embody the things that I say. So maybe I don't always act the way I should. And this sounds, this sounds like, like convoluted, but here's the thing. I try to embody what I think a moral person would live like, and it has actually led to a more moral life. Yeah, but that's you. So, awesome. Sure, sure. <laughs> and that's sure. awesome for you. I'm I really feel you. like most people, if they were exposed to a moral life, they would live the moral life that's and not obvious. the vision. Exactly. You operate it's, under your belief system. Everybody yeah, does. But, but yeah, people so, like Ruby and Alf exactly. want to institute an immoral system, no, and then people I don't will live by system. that. No, they don't, they don't want to institute an immoral system. That's unfair, JB. They want they to institute an immoral system. Amoral they want the same system. thing we do. They, they just want don't a system realize that doesn't there. choose, no. doesn't lean in any direction. No, I want people to be free to choose what they want in life. That is yeah, freedom. Exactly. <laughs> like that's okay. That Again, freedom, on the other side of freedom comes responsibility. Of you can't okay. choose what they want. No, they want no choose. responsibility, but they want all the freedom. That you have no responsibility to maintain that? this. You keep saying what that. Are you what are about? you talking about when you say responsibility? Okay, I'll explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. A society that allows freedom to even exist, you know. Go back to medieval times when people were peasants with no rights, earning nothing, had no freedom whatsoever, right? right? The free and open society is created from something. And mm -hmm. I'm saying it's not it's not just freedom isn't free. I know that's you've probably heard that a million times, but it's true. I you don't just get check. freedom because you want it. Freedom isn't well, free. It comes from the belief that we are all inherently deserving rights, which I completely agree with, and you guys right. completely agree with. Right. But in order to maintain a society in which those rights are protected and enshrined, you need to have the responsibility along with the rights. You can't just say, let society do whatever it wants and degenerate into any sort of freedom it has because freedom is all that matters. Freedom is very valuable, but the way you get there is through responsibility.
And, what and freedom of, is a means, an not an end. Of the type of responsibility, though, because that I'll give an example. So, yeah, a child who has the freedom from his parents to do whatever he wants, like you were saying earlier, like it's a problem of the parents if a child is exposed to, you know, bad things mm -hmm. on the internet. Let's just say yeah. games, whatever, violence, all this kind of stuff. And you're right. Uh, the parents should be involved in the child's life. But that should be involved is exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to responsibility. The parents can't just say, freedom is good, let the child grow up completely free. They have to enact responsibility to shape the child to be someone who has freedom, who has rights, of course, yeah. but that's earned. Right. What and do you it's... mean by earned? Because I, I support that. I do think that people should raise their children with the values that, you know, they want to instill in them and that will make them. And that's responsibility. And the right. same way that works, we, that. we should raise a conflict. society with the values we want to instill in it. And just saying everyone is free isn't a value. That's not exactly. That's it. That's actually that's an aberration. My... No, hold on, hold on. I had a tweet about this yesterday that went it's semi-viral in my circle <laughs> Ooh, oh ruby spacex dunking on me Ooh, no what i'm saying is that a lot of people appreciated this my point in that tweet was imagine having a world view oh, i saw that you I saw that fake tweeting about me because like, no right after it, no that wasn't about you that was about <laughs> i forgot who that was about but my point was that having the worldview that just letting people do whatever they want is actually in uh it's 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 an aberration it's a total forgetfulness of responsibility That's you're right. actually you don't actually when you say something hold on when you say something like just my worldview is let people do what they want you don't actually have a worldview That's not my world your worldview is a lack of a worldview your worldview is just do nothing. That. Just sit there. Just sit there and do nothing. That's not a worldview. If, if that's how somebody finds their happiness, that's fine. But I want people to do things. For My end game is not people's happiness. My end game is that's societal so cohesion. What is, what is like your moral philosophy? But, I tell how is that that hard for you to guys? No, to I get philosophy. it. But I, we have different goals. <laughs> you have not gonna agree My with. So you just want let Ruby happiness. and Alf state their goals. They're Yes. What are y'all's goals? Okay. Is to create a happy and healthy society when we construct our own values that are constantly changing based on our changing environments, just like we have been doing with the American government and moving, you know, and progressing. And you might not agree with that, Jordan, but, you know. Okay, I'll say. Let I'll say. I don't you. believe way, just like, just do whatever the fuck you want, you know? Like, I do yeah, believe you really that think that, social norms. You really think that you do whatever the fuck Let Alf give his piece. Let Alf give his right. piece. The Alf. way I see it is society has to be formed on its own volition. It can't, you can't force it to be. It's like, where we may be one big group, but we're also individuals. And if you you push an individual no. to do one Time thing, out. that's I got that's no such thing. As, there is no such thing another. as the individual like, in 2020. I, I don't agree with you. And then if like think of it like this, an alcohol is not going to change. Alf. There's not because it's always it's always. Sorry. Wait, let him finish. Sorry, let him finish. I don't want to interrupt. Let Alf finish his point. An alcoholic is not going to change unless he himself wants to change. That's okay. how you get society to be a better place. They have sure. to decide for themselves to do it. Oh, oh man, this is perfect. Wait, yeah, Alf, you're right. Yeah. Alf, no. you're right. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. On an individual level, you're 100% right. You're basically advocating for individual responsibility, which I 100% agree with you on, right? No oh, one person can change the whole world. But what I'm saying is, we are individuals, but we're also a part of something greater. Exactly. So therefore, there are societal issues and there's the way you want society to be. That's different. Me saying, me saying, uh, me, me saying something about OnlyFans being bad or whatever has uh -huh. nothing to do with what I would tell someone who's subscribed to a million OnlyFans accounts. I'm not right. going to say, oh, that's bad. They should just remove that so your life is better. No, it's right. you need to get a hold of your life. Exactly. Yeah. No, the, I agree with that. The we're asking for societal issues agree. versus individual ones is different. I'm not we against all agree. I would like love to change social norms, you know? prostitution. Hold on, let Ruby, want... Ruby, maybe Charles and Ruby. I don't know. Ruby's oh, raising her and Charles like, raising his hand. Well, um, out. Like collective values and changing social norms. Like I personally am vegan. That doesn't mean I want to line everyone up and shoot whoever's not vegan. But so we're I will not... endorse that and try to, you know, help move that social um, norm by emphasizing the positivity of being a vegan I'm that benefits. 
I'm no, pro-education on this. But I'm not so, pro-shaming people. So that's why I have the issue of I don't, treating sex workers like that. I don't have an issue with like what Glink was saying. I'm not going over there and telling people. I actually don't even have an issue with that. I agree with education. Tell them these are the, the problems that can happen if you go into this lifestyle. That's fine. I'm not against you telling them that, you know, what's wrong or what could go wrong in that lifestyle. But they okay, have Charles. to have that choice. They have to make that choice. Keep them educated. Let them know what could go wrong. I mean, I agree. Yeah. The choice. yeah, I think That's I agree there. Would you be well? I'm well. Wait, Charles, did you want to say something? Or... Yeah, Charles, go ahead. Um, yeah, I had a bunch of things actually, but uh, I, I've lost half of them. My internet connection has I, been I, really, really yeah, spotty, okay. and I've been struggling to to keep pace with the conversation. I think I'm going to have to log We're off of here really soon. Um, and that, that that's another thing. We very quickly got into such an abstract field that uh, we're not even on the topic of what we were originally talking about. Alf said something about how society has to like exist of its own volition, and that's just utter nonsense if you study the history of literally any country that was ever founded ever um <laughs> like the united states of america the vast majority of people go. the vast majority of people opposed rebelling against the british um it was like, you know and if you it was study like the ancient one, civilizations like, like babylon 30. yeah but we weren't america yet that's my point dude exactly. is that our society was not formed of its own volition all right, like well, that's that's about, ludicrous. Like, that's no, but I'm not saying that's what happens. I'm saying that's the ideal way that you want things to happen. I'm not saying that that is what's happening. I'm saying that's the. All ideal. right, well, like you go ahead and you live in Plato's little world of forms, uh, and I'll, I'll stay in, here in the I'll land of proper I'll live nouns. In New Jersey, where I live now, <laughs> and continue living the way I've been. Shit, living. Nibba, I'm Nibba, Nibba, I'm in Texas, bro. I got all like, the freedom. This is the real like world. Your Bar ideal doesn't get to happen. I like Texas. It's cool. I get to uh, and, food in Texas now. Ruby, where are you from? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm from the United States of America. <laughs> oh, you're well, like what gay. region? That's okay, so gay. Region, yeah. All that's right, such a gay say, pop out. Yeah, I literally I am. Uh, I am apple. literally self doxing. Oh, I where are you from? Dox every day. Charles, no, I'm not doxing. I'm not doxing. I'm sorry. Like, I'm just. I live on the east. I'll get to a oh. point. Charles, where are you from? Uh, I am from 20 miles outside of a town populated by less than 500 people in the Ozark Mountains of Missouri. Okay. okay. So okay. I, base? I, I mean, Yo, base. what's interesting is to me is that where you're from also informs yeah. how you view these things. Like it makes sense to me that Alf oh, is super can, oh, individualistic I like I like and this. he lives in the middle of a city. I like this. And it makes lot. sense that Jordan is super like for yeah. these constitutional kind of founding principles so, because he's from Texas. Exactly. Which so from, me, which tried to hey, can I can I give right, a quick just wanted to tell, like link finish. That's a good point. No, I mean it's not even a major point. I'm just saying where you're <laughs> from and your lived experience yeah. totally informs your worldview. I as get well. into this problem with Europeans. I talk to Europeans a lot and they try to lump Americans into this one ideal or one place. And I'm like yeah. It's United so States different. is huge. We have yeah. so many different so, regions. Hold with on different can problems I give you, can I give a quick anecdote? Yeah. Sure, quick yeah. anecdote. Very 30, 30 second anecdote. Mm -hmm. So there was someone who had to come over to my house to pick up something from my mailbox. Uh, this was last weekend after we went to the gun range, we shot some AKs and some ARs and this guy who's kind of a thug, frankly, you know, we all know what that means. Kind of a thug and no one was at my house and he had to get something from the mail, his charger from the mailbox from, from my mailbox while I was gone from my house. And he said, oh, dude, can I come and get that? And I, I, I knew he would ask that, so I left it in my mailbox before I left my house for the day. Here's what I did. I called both of my surrounding neighbors, and I said, hey, guys, hey, I've known y'all for 20-plus years. Do you mind just keeping an eye out? This was on a weekend when, when I knew none of my neighbors were working. They were just at home for the day. Uh -huh. I called both of them up on either side. I said, hey, guys, do you mind just like watching my house really quick? There's going to be someone coming. If he's there for more than five minutes, then something else is going on because that charger, he knows where it is. It's in the mailbox. I leave my front door unlocked. I have guns. It's like, I don't care. But if I'm not there, then it does become problematic. My neighbors texted me back immediately and said, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll watch out for the day. We're outside all day. The thing is, and this actually ties into the Ahmad Arbery shooting, 
Uh, is in in southern in southern culture people look out for their neighborhoods and there's a sense of community where people are like oh shit watch out for this guy's house that's something that people on the coast don't understand like i, I understand that we have community here too yeah. we but like, yeah, but we've like had these watches out for people interest, on our bosses you know how could you under are... how could you understand that if you're packed in like a sardine in some well, it just it just gets broken down into smaller forms. It becomes blocks. You know what I'm saying? Like my block, we watch out for our block. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The well, over, well, I'm, watching out for their you block. know, I'm not trying to make this into a whole Ahmaud Arbery thing, but mm -hmm. like, what do you think happened with Arbery? What happened was there was a community of people who were like, hey, look out for the robber. This guy keeps coming that. through, stealing pipes, uh, and eventually wait, he. This he, anecdote he, just turned into you switching well, this to like the most me, hot button political say, thing right now, which I don't even know if I. I, I it'll it'll signal boost your channel. Don't worry about I think, it. I think they're all. They, I think they all acted wrong. I think the people who wanted to do the citizens arrest should have just kept following. Uh, I don't kept think they did. I don't think. I don't think the McMichaels did anything wrong. I don't think they should have followed. I will. I will. I will actually die on that. But I bet they were quick guys. I'm gonna. I, I, I'm gonna take my leave. I have to go take care of something. Okay. Okay. But I uh, appreciated the discussion. I think I have a little bit better understanding of uh, where you guys are coming from. Hopefully, you have a better understanding of where I'm coming from. Yeah, I, hey, I appreciate hey, it. Clink, it clink, I enjoyed no, each of you. Clink, clink, yeah, but you. I think that next time, Glink, if I link you to my YouTube channel, maybe, maybe less than sure. Five. I'll check it out. All Thank right. You. Thanks for coming on. Right. I'll Thanks for the you. invite. Later. All right. All right, guys. Um, so I'm, I might, I don't want to um, talk about like the Ahmad Arbery or like movies. No, I'm not Every time I do a fucking stream, it always like gets into race. Every fucking stream. I'm trying to get <laughs> yeah, most of things do I've been trying really hard boil, to keep it out of Most there. things do boil down to race when you look at all of them. They yeah, really but do. I just don't really care about race. They really do. <laughs> I'm sorry to anyway, make it that Anyway, tell me. I'm curious. But... All right. Now, are you both grapers? That's your thing? I don't have an ideology. I have a people. Ideologies like are changed. Do you think Nick Fuentes is a smart, cool guy? I'm not <laughs> going do. to comment. I do. All right. Okay. I think so what's your ideal, like, like if you could be president tomorrow, what would your policy be? Oh, to, like, wow. Oh, oh, shit. Okay. Like, what do you okay. think is the most critical okay. thing? Would it be, okay. like, you know, okay. Okay. outlawing I would like, have women it, aren't allowed to I, work, you know, no. so you have to force men to be slaves You to clearly are, like, brain poisoned by the left to think that, like, you know <laughs> what our ideas are. Oh, that's rich, because you, you were every doing time the same you see something, you're like, <laughs> your people believe. Yeah, you, you kept lumping me into, like, left day. ideologies that I don't even agree on. You were like, oh, yeah. but then you're against capitalism. Oh, yeah. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not right, right, right. I got asked what my ideas would be, and you were like, what? No women voting? No, I never said that. I said no women I, working. I would say, but... I would say, mm. net, I would say, um, an indefinite restriction on immigration. That's like the easiest first one. Like, that like no right. migration at all to benefit the workers, black and white, Ooh. who are still here. Um, I would do free speech absolutism. I would I would remove all hate speech laws, any hate speech, any anything. I think we're all about those objective morals, you know. So should someone be able to go up in front of a school There's... and say like, "Hey, kiddos, kill yourself"? Okay, who's doing that? What are you talking exactly. about? Like, so who wants to ever do that? You throw these absurd scenarios at me to kind of prove the slippery <laughs> slope. I'm just throwing it right back at you. No one is so... doing that. Exactly, and no one is doing no. The shit that but you on me on of. the contrary, you are advocating for the destruction of the nuclear family no, by advocating for things like porn. And also, what do you think I like advocating? All I'm advocating is people stop fucking harassing and shitting on people on Twitter. Like, yeah, that's all. Because, well, honestly, the term if harassment's you want, kind of if you like, want me to like, stop I'm kind of stigmatizing. I'm drinking a little bit, so I'm actually gonna just like go a little bit off the rails with you really quick. Right, I, on, think what, I think what you're doing right now is you're trying to justify your own degeneracy and the the same mistakes oh, that you've wow, made. This is so interesting. And I'm, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna pathologize you a little bit. I'm not trying to like oh, you know oh, rail okay. you on stream, but here. Here's the thing. Everything yeah, the you're feminist is just fighting to justify her life because she was a stripper and it's all okay. It was a choice. Oh my god. Well, what yeah, if she you just said it? You just then? said it. That's what you're doing. What you're doing no, is I trying to. I had a shitty time as a stripper. I'm not saying that was an empowering experience. I understand the nuance of it. I've lived that experience. Shouldn't it be illegal what happened to you? I well for I think there should be regulations on clubs. I worked at a shitty club where there weren't regulations. <gasps> 
Damn, you're pro regulation? What are you, a Republican? Oh, I am John pro McCain? What, what kind of regulation? Or like having more like democratized workplaces. What or kind whatever of you regulations? Call it. You're regulations interesting, like, Ruby. You're not I'm allowed for to touch the fucking like models. Oh, I love or, regulation. Like, like you're not allowed to um like wait outside in the parking lot for a model when they come out. Like there's basic safety measures. Let me that ask you this. Places are supposed it to. sounds like you had a very bad experience and you're like trying to justify why that experience that was. Is, sounds like that I have a question. That's what it is. Tiny brain, I have a question. Little armchair psychology. That is I have a question. microscopic IQ armchair psychology. Yes, I'm Hey Ruby, yes, you 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 hit the nail on the head. I'm like 80 IQ and I'm dumb. Oh, got right. me, Charles. I have a question. Um, do you think that prostitution should be legal? Do I think it? Uh, well, there's a debate over. I definitely think it should be decriminalized. And yes, probably. Yeah, definitely. I, yeah, leaning towards. There's like some nuances between like how it would look legalized, but definitely right. want it see, decriminalized. That's... That's that's my all right. Interesting decrim. How do you feel about pimping? Um, if it's exploitative, then it's bad. Which pimping that term define exploitative by, by nature? It's exploitative. What by nature, being a about? boss of anyone is exploitative. Making money off sex is by its Making very money definition. Making money off of having someone work now like a cashier Mars. job, like having someone work at a minimum wage job where you're literally Ruby, selling you're, you're hours of their precious life, selling hours of their life for seven dollars an hour that's exploitation not someone who goes on stage shows her tits and then gets five hundred dollars what's the bigger exploitation come on do you think that I, I you're won't. hacking the biochemical nature of the male brain do you think that might be a little bit exploitative towards the men I think it's well. I mean, there is like a, a reasonable debate on how like advertisements and various services exploit our brains. You know, right. even sites like YouTube, their the algorithm is finely tuned to like exploit our brains. You know, and ultimately extract resources from us. How much um, studying have you done into MK Ultra? Um, I've I've watched a couple of YouTube videos, but okay. I don't know if I want to go down. You've that. got you've got two homework assignments now. MK Ultra. And Weimar Germany. You need to learn about these two things because once you've learned about these two things, you're going to have a very different perspective. I on... bet. I've seen some of the videos. It's pretty wacky shit. Mm hmm. And Jordan, like... do you support that? Oh, wait, I forgot. I... Did I have the one view? Or no? Yeah, he looks muted. Oh, is it? I'm. Oh, I'm sorry. I... I, no, no, you didn't mute me. I muted myself so I could watch Nick oh, Fuentes wow. while everyone was talking. Um, You're Nick, fucking Nick, obsessed. No, I I enjoy a show and I send him a ten dollars super chat tonight. I Nick Nick is really where the money's at right now as far as where my where my ideology is. What was the question <laughs> you guys just po posed to me? I mean, I don't really want to go down the MK Ultra path. That was kind of what Charles was bringing up. Um, I mean, MK Ultra was a legitimate government. Like, like I don't, what do you, I don't even know what your argument is, Ruby. It doesn't exist. Like, of course, well, no, I don't know. There's a lot of know. conspiracy theories around it, so it's I don't, you know. Right, right, right. What, right. Yeah, right. what you do me? is you go to uh, my my question was, uh, how much do you know about MK Ultra? Because uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty woke on MK Ultra. Go, Ruby. Don't don't watch videos on YouTube. Go to CIA.gov or LibraryofCongress.gov. Download the declassified documents yourself. Read those. All right, and all then right, I will do that. Now, now we can have your, an MK Ultra stream. <laughs> your your the root of your philosophy seems to be coming from "and it harm none, do what thou wilt." As long as it doesn't hurt anybody else, do what you want. Right. For the most part, I have like That's some utilitarian moral. Like axiom is, I want to maximize human flourishing and happiness and contentment and minimize and I'm sure suffering. You, do. you know that philosophy is a derivative of a man named Aleister Crowley. Okay, are you familiar with him? Aleister Crowley wrote the Lima and the Book of the Law. In the Book of the Law, that's where he coined "Do what thou wilt." He said, "Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law." He also foretold the coming of the sexual liberation movement that I'm sure you're quite fond of. Now, Aleister Crowley had a disciple. That disciple's name was Jack Parsons. He was a rocket scientist who worked on the Manhattan Project. Jack Parsons was... I don't know. I don't think I really want to go down this... 
I, I know that it seems it seems disconnected from what yeah, I'm no, talking I about. I will I will Google it. it. I'll look. I'll, I'll download the government files, but I don't want to like dive into that right my now. point is my the reason i was telling you all that was to explain this to you that through jack parsons his call his roommate and friend l ron hubbard worked on the mk ultra program and some of his what his findings in the mk ultra program are in his book dianetics so you need to once you've looked up mk ultra also look up l ron hubbard's book I I'm, Dianetics, and that will help fill in right, the missing I will gaps. The Scientology cult. Okay. Once you have that information and Weimar Germany, that's gonna that I'd love to talk to you more about that. Unfortunately, my internet keeps going in and out, and I've I've been struggling to keep up, and my ears just got assaulted by like five minutes of backed up audio that didn't play on my end until just now. Um, so I think I need to log off of here, All right. but um, this has been great. I want to do this again, uh, sure, sure. probably with less than five people because that seemed yeah, to get a little was... bit box newsy and that's not good. <laughs> no, I thought it was, I thought it was, I thought it was productive. I honestly yeah, do yeah. think it was all productive. I don't yeah, think no, we no. were rude to each other. I think it was, I think it was basically good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Charles is out yet or is the camera looking. And... Um, anyway, I guess to anyone. Ah, in chat, ah, it just happened again. Uh, oh. Do you have an X you out or something? Yeah, no, I'll leave studio. I gotta watch. I'm gonna watch Nick's show. Uh, Everyone, yeah. Nicholas J. Fuentes on D Live, Jordan B videos on Twitter, <laughs> um, Ruby. I always like talking to you. You're you're No, it's fun. I you've been inviting me on some streams and I like this you. Is my I think, entertainment. I just I disagree with you. I disagree with you, but I do I unlike most people I can say on the left, I think you're arguing in good faith. I think you're trying to find the truth yeah. and I I disagree with you on on basically everything, but you're not you're not disingenuous and I do appreciate that. Thank you. I you're I really the same trying for to, you. That's why I that's a big issue with online conversations is it's just like i don't know if people don't truly care about like coming to like the truth you know or some mutual understanding or working together that's where i'm working gonna... towards i am working towards that holy um, shit so check check your twitter dms by the way all right i will bye um all right bye thanks for coming on val do you want to come on Holy shit. All right. Um, so I don't know what else to does anyone have any questions or anything before I wrap it up? It's so weird not having another voice there. I got so used to having like input. Now I'm like, oh it's fucking quiet. And no Val, I am not. And thanks Elf for coming on. I thought that went pretty well. <laughs> Val, if you want, I could send you a link, even though you're probably camera shy and you'll dox me. <laughs> I didn't even know you had a YouTube channel. Um, all right. Any questions? Or let me see. Oh, thank you guys. Uh. <laughs> I know I'm gonna take the MK Ultra red pill. Gonna be a Scientologist. These are these stuffed animals are actually worth like this is worth like five hundred dollars. This is a vintage 1950s Steiff stuffed animal from Germany. It's look at that. I love it. it. Looks like bad taxidermy. That's why I love these. They're heirlooms, so I'm not allowed to sell it. Val, well, I can't believe you missed it, you little bitch recap we were just talking about only fans and sex work and whether as a concept they can work in like a functioning society and how sites like only fans have like a negative impact on you know young men and if it's like intrinsically exploitative which i don't i think mean, any form of labor in exchange for money i think is like intrinsically exploitative by nature you know you're being coerced like with money to do something that you wouldn't necessarily do without um but, you know, I thought everyone was being pretty reasonable for the most part. Uh, got like a little off track sometimes. Devin, I'm not doing this right now. <laughs> I was like, I can, I, can I just have one, one 
little live stream that doesn't devolve into like a race neck you thing. I don't want that to be my thing. I don't want that to be my thing. Okay. That could be your thing. But I think it's that it's a tragedy and the the narratives surrounding it are obviously oversimplified. Um, it's a tragedy. It's a shit show. The more I learn about it, the more I'm just like, this is like fine tuned, you know, to like erupt America and like chaos, you know, between uh, liberals and conservatives seeing it in like completely polar opposite ways. Thanks, John. Well, my general feeling on the topic is that I'm pro destigmatizing sex workers. Like people are fairly hostile to sex workers, especially now online. People go out of their way to find, you know, doxes of people. They go out of their way to um, like leak names and steal their shows and stuff. Or they just go on Twitter and I see these fucking chicks on Twitter like, there was a girl who went viral on Twitter because she was wearing a dress, like, oh, a little tight dress, you know, and she wrote a dissertation on, like, sexual objectification um, in, like, nonfiction novels or something, like, and it was, the internet goes wild. I mean, that wasn't, like, an OnlyFans thing, but it's just, like, if there's a woman being sexy somewhere, the internet is gonna lose its shit. Like, there's such a disproportionate reaction going on i just want to get to the bottom of it and i think it's the promiscuity theory that's where i think it stems from is men are just going in their feelings like i feel like sensitive to this i feel like disgust when i see a woman you know selling sex work or whatever um and then they try to create a moral theory to like lay on top of that is that you kirby <laughs> I knew at some point that it would be taken as like me trying to pathologize and justify my past. Guess what? I've made a lot of mistakes. I'm ashamed of a lot of shit, but I'm not pro-sex work just because, because if I was pro-sex work, I would, I would be like, oh, I was so empowered. Like as a stripper, I was the most feminist thing I ever did with my life. Like, no, I'm honest about it. It was fucking hellish. Like it was horrible, traumatic, literally I had PTSD from it. Um, but I'm also talking about how there's positive experiences in the industry too, especially online where it's safer. So I think we should be encouraging sex workers to do stuff online in safer environments. Skives, if I, my mother was perfect to start with, so there was no need to forgive her in the first place. All right, guys, I guess I'll probably sign off and try to eat something. I'm starving. <sighs> I think that went all right. Yeah, maybe next time I'll try to do something like that with, like, less people because it, it was so hard. Like, I would want to respond to, like, a point, you know, and then someone would just take it in, like, a whole other direction. It was really hard. Like, you know, I thought Glink did a good job. He was, like, you know, I mean, obviously I lean more towards like his side than I do like Jordan or Charles. Um, like he, he has a pretty reasonable opinion. I just don't, it's just the objective morality thing. I just can't, I wish it was real. That's a nice thought, you know, but I just, just wanting something to be real doesn't make it real, you know, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Did I win? That, that's what really mattered. Did I fucking win? <laughs> Oh no, you hate me. All right, I'm, I guess I'm gonna fucking sign off or whatever. But thanks everyone for watching. I heard there was like 800 people watching through Glink's channel. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty cool. Hopefully I don't get swarmed with hate. I thought I acted fairly reasonable. Thank you for saying I did okay. All right. Bye-bye.